Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the all-time Republic of Ireland 11. And we're the same, same crew again, but this time we're going in for the right back. And the short list we have, um, I'm pretty sure Gary's going to add to it after, after my list anyway. We've got Gary Kelly, 52 caps and two goals. Uh, Stephen Carr, 44 caps, zero goals. Steve Finnan, 53 caps, two goals. Seamus Coleman, 53 caps, one goal. Stephen Kelly, 39 caps, zero goals. Dave Langan, 26 appearances, or caps, sorry, uh, zero goals. And then Chris Morris, 35 uh, caps, zero goals. Gary, who have you got? So I've I've actually got two more. Uh, I've got one of our all-time greats, arguably potentially our greatest ever player in Jackie or Johnny Carey of Manchester United, who got 29 caps straddling World War II, 1937 to 1953. And the first non-Irish-born player to play for the Republic of Ireland was Shea Brennan, uh, who was right back on the Manchester United European Cup winning team in 1968. And he got 19 caps for us from 1965 to 1970. Before my time, both of them, uh, Jackie Carey was even before my dad's time, in you know, vague memories, but I've heard lots of stories about both of them. And Shea Brennan, I can actually remember us with Waterford. Uh, he subsequently came to Waterford after... He's that's that's surreal. Like, so. you know, like a historian there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't know. I didn't know that. So okay. glad I brought you along. Anyway, yeah. um, I, I might. By the way, if I missed anyone on the list that you may have had, just shout mm. out there now. Uh, I don't think I have. Have I? No, I think it's. It, yeah, there's some quality players. Well, there. Just, yeah, just thing, maybe to include Dennis Irwin in the right. I would have had Dennis Irwin in as a right back as well. But I mean, oh, we're going to come to him in the left back as well. Yeah, as a possibility. Be, yeah, 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 he can yeah, be yeah. included. I'd like both. to let's pick players in their best positions, maybe. Yes. Yeah. He okay. was a much better left back. I thought uh, personally, oh. he was the best left back in the Premier League for a decade. <laughs> Arguably, he there was the best right back as well. Um, yeah. he was I, 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 I agree because when, when, when I started watching football, he was predominantly left back. So that's what I remember him as. Yeah. So um, there's probably people shouting at the screen or whatever saying that you have to pick him. I, for me, he would get a mention, but we'll come to him on the left okay. back video. Yeah. I think it is fairer. Okay. Um, but Fair if enough. you if you yeah. if you if you want to ca make an argument for his case, but, uh, so be it. Do it now. Okay. Well, I I think he was. Um, my memory is he was predominantly right footed. I know he played a lot of his career yeah. at left back, and uh, that was more I think to improvise. He he could play in either position. He was, look he was a superb player, and uh, I think he needs to be considered in both in in both positions. Yeah, but, defi definitely yeah. a mention yeah. anyway. I think it would be disrespectful otherwise. Okay. Um, but any anyone else on that list um, will, I suppose, this list here with you know Kelly well, Carr. Just, just to mention with, with what you said about Johnny Carey. Johnny Carey was the first um, legend I grew up with. Um, my grandfather was the one who got me into football and he would have played a little bit of League of Ireland stuff back in literally probably the 40s and stuff. And he said to me, Jackie Carey was by far the best player he'd ever seen play football. And he never shut up about Jackie Carey. Anytime yeah. we talk about That's... a great player, it was Jackie Carey, Jackie Carey, Jackie Carey. Uh, and I think, you know, I know a little bit about his career and we talk about the World War kind of, you know, you know, stopping and that sort of stuff. Um, but to have lasted that long at Manchester United and to have got only that amount of caps, as we said before, doesn't mean a huge amount. But yeah, one of the true greats who I think has been lost a little bit on Irish folklore of, of the Irish team. But if we're looking at, you know, I suppose what we know most about, because we don't have that much, haven't seen that much of, yeah. of Kerry, we can only just, you know, rely on legend. Um, always watch Love and Gary Kelly play. Um, just coming into that era of, you know, before, in and around 94, loved his enthusiasm, his athleticism. Uh, when he played for and always thought he gave us that great outlet bombing down the right hand side very like Stephen Carr as well you know, the two of them were quite similar Stephen Kin Finnan even a little bit more finesse I thought um, in his style of play and gave us one of the great memories of, of putting that ball into to McAteer um, I was at Lansdowne Road that day and I'll never forget that cross uh, again a bit of an understated player I think Steve Finnan and has gone off the radar now an yeah, awful lot I, I like that <laughs> yeah which is you know there's a bit of mystery around him as well just retired and, yeah. Yeah. and you know one of the only Irish players to have won a Champions League yeah. Yeah. so um, and actually won it compared to Cuevin Keller I know he got a medal but Finnan actually oh, there's been plenty of them along the way that have, you know will turn up and in fairness Paul if you'd been on that squad you would have gone yeah I'm a Champions League I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not slating him I'm just saying he actually he would have played a part in actually 
he would have played a part in the final, but he also would have played a part overall, whereas Callagher was just in the squad. That's He's in the it. squad, but look as well, you've got to remember as well, it is a squad game nowadays, and the three keepers there, yeah, okay, he didn't play, but he has a part, he has a role to play in supporting the other two keepers who are ready yeah. for the game and stuff like that, and hopefully he's going to be one that we can keep an eye on for the future. And, yeah. You know, he might be knocking on on, um, on Darren's door in a, a couple of years' time, the same with Mark Travers as well. Elsewhere on the list, Seamus, obviously, captain, superb, probably, as I said, just behind Darren in my reckoning at the moment is the best player in the squad, probably along with Matt Doherty, which is unfortunate, <laughs> as we all know. Um, and then Stephen Kelly, Dave Lang, and Chris Morris. Chris Morris, another great servant of the country around 1990, and you know, I was was superb in Italy. And again, one of those players that has just kind of forgotten about a little bit, but did a great job for Jack. Yeah. What about yourself? Yeah, I actually I was gonna go. I'm going for Gary Kelly. I thought it would be the only one, so I'm glad to hear someone else <laughs> remembers his career. But I I kind of remember him coming through early 90s, and uh, I saw him play for Home Farm once before he went over to England. He played as a striker right up until mm. we went to England. And that home farm team, I think they went about five or six years without, like they were a legendary youth team. They went years without losing a game. And uh, it was just, I think he, his time at the top was probably over the course of three or four seasons. But I think he got to a higher level than any of the other um, fullbacks on the list. I think Coleman and Finnan, both excellent uh, players, but, own right, yeah. but more steady, steady eddies to a certain extent, whereas... I remember watching 1990 World Cup and just being so proud that Gary Kelly was Irish. Like, he outsprinted over Mars. I'll always remember 94. that. Yeah, 94 yeah. at yeah. one stage. And yeah. he was in the PFA Premier League Team of the Year a couple of times. And I think with niggly injuries and stuff, he never really fulfilled his potential. But for them few years around the 94 World Cup, he was the best right back in England. And he, was, he got very, t I think, roughly treated by Leeds as well towards yeah. the end because obviously the whole thing with Leeds kind of yeah. falling apart and... Uh, he was unlucky in that sort of way. I think he had another few years left with us because if you had said to me 52 caps for Gary Kelly, I would have thought no more near 70 or something. Well, he retired but at 32. There but you go. one thing, if you ever talk to Leeds fans, he, he's a, he's adored by Leeds fans, mm. which tells you a lot about a player, I think, as well. Um, yeah, I think he, he's another one I think he's maybe got a little bit forgotten about over the years. But for me, just in, when he was in his absolute prime, he was the best right back I've ever seen play, personally. Well, we actually, when we did the video last time, we actually, me and Will agreed on him for the for the winner, but I think it'll be, it's going to be different in this case. Uh, Gary, what, out of, the, out of the, all the players there, or if the, there's anyone that maybe deserves an honor, honourable mention, with Stephen Kelly, an honourable mention, he, he was playing under Trapatoni. Yeah, well, one of the names, and I, I wouldn't have him as the greatest light right back, in fairness, but is Davy Langan, who um, nobody was more committed to the Irish cause than Davy Langan. And he gave so much in the green short, and he's mm. one of my all-time favorite players. Um, I wouldn't have him as the greatest right back of all time, but I would have him. If you're talking about eleven players who gave more for their country, you couldn't give any more than David Langan. So he's somebody. Yeah, no, I, he's not, I you couldn't give more like a James McLean or like a Robbie Keane. Yeah, more like a, a James McLean. Yeah, more that he's just commit. You can't question his commitment, okay. and. Uh, and he showed up when he was injured. He just he just gave everything in a green shirt. And uh, he's he's one of the, the, the players from my childhood and one I'll always have fond memories of. And uh, I, to me, from that perspective, he's one of our all-time greats. Um, I, one thing I do think we need to be cognizant of is going back. I mean, the FEI will be 100 years old in 1921. Okay, we've been playing international football, arguably since 1924 or 27, depending on what you agree on. But uh, the greatest all-time level has got to, uh, players have got to be taken over those 100 years. And uh, I do want to come back to, to Jackie Carey. Because, I mean, just some of the facts on this. He capped, He was the first foreign captain, I think, to win the FA Cup and the league with Manchester United, with any club, I think, in England at the time. He was player of the year in 1949 in England. He was selected to captain the rest of Europe to play against the Great Britain eleven in 1947 at Hamden in a huge fundraising match in front of 130,000 people for, for FIFA. Um, I mean... He so we're is, talking about world superstar. I think, you know, I if, think, that, if that had it been today, I I think yeah. today I I I actually don't think there is a contest. I mean, I, he played right half, played right back, but he was one of the, he was a superstar. He was our mm. first global superstar, and 
I, he straddled both world wars. He also played for the IFA for Northern Ireland as well, because mm. you could play for both in those days. Um, sure, that went down well. Yeah. So <laughs> <at> the <end. laughs> there's a, there's another story yeah, there. We, there's we, a long we, video we, on that we, one. We leave that for but, another day. Uh, we leave yeah. that for another day. <laughs> but um, for me, and, and I mean, and, and we're talking about Steve Finnan winning the European Cup, by the way. Uh, Shea Brennan won the Euro, the Champions League, uh, yeah, <laughs> as it yeah. was, um, was known as the European Cup in 1968 with Manchester United. Um, <laughs> So he would have to have a shout in there as well. But for, for me, I would pick Jackie Carey okay. as our right back. Let's see. We we did, we did agreed on on Gary Kelly previously, and then we met Kevin Kilbar in in Daily Mount, and I was telling him about what we were doing or whatever, and he was he seemed to be so shocked that you know Coleman was really in the reckoning, and we told me a car and okay. Finn, and he thought they were far superior, and he would play with all the well, pretty much. Except for Dave Lang and Chris Morris, Jackie Kerry and Shea Brown, he probably would have played with all of them at some point in his career. And the one that he said was Stephen Carr, which I think, and, and Andy Reid actually on Twitter called us okay. out and he goes, how, how can Stephen Carr not get in that squad as well? So it, it, it's so, it's, it's it, that's why it makes such a good debate is that there's yeah. so many people have so many different opinions on it, you know? So I think with Stephen though as well, if we look at, Kind of his career in comparison to Gary, I suppose Gary was was on the big stage in ninety four and broke through. Stephen maybe didn't have that opportunity and mm. only forty four caps, no goals. And I always used to remember Stephen Carr scoring an absolute couple of screamers for Spurs. Spurs yeah. And I did love again, like Gary Kelly, that bombing nature he used yeah. to have going forward on the right wing, um, sticking the head down and kind of driving forward. And it, uh, yeah, like to me, I don't think there's much between those two players. I think maybe just a slightly sort of nostalgic feel to Gary Kelly in 94 and all that sort of stuff. Um, does, does Jackie, I know your, your granddad had a big case yeah, for Jackie Kelly, yes. does, does that, now what Gary's after saying, does that change your kind of view a little yeah, bit? Yeah, well, there was, we were only talking about this this uh, documentary that we saw a couple of weeks ago yeah. about the FAI and the IFA and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And Did he play that team that beat Brazil? Uh, Do you know? Which one was that? I think was it Liam Brady score? Oh no no, oh, no, 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 this, no, no. Back, this is back yeah, in the World War. So that yeah, was seventies yeah. or whatever. Um, no, it was you know they they mentioned Jackie Carey and kind of you know uh, I think playing for both sides and yeah, that sort he, of stuff. Yeah, he captained the team that beat England in Goodison Park in nineteen forty nine, the first foreign team to to beat England at home, which they conveniently forget about when they talk about the great Hungarian side mm. of fifty three. We beat them in forty nine, two nil, and uh, Jackie Carey was the captain of that side. Um, one of the gr- uh, great days of Irish football. I mean, it's... he's probably the greatest forgotten about Irish player so. that's ever been. Well, and again, this is my first I'm ever hearing about. So I'm delighted. Know, I, I think okay. The thing is, yeah. as well, though, I think if he had played in, even in the 70s, I think there would have been a lot more uh, video footage. You know, he would have played with the likes of Brady and all that sort of stuff, and we'd know more about him. But I think it's just that era. There's not a huge amount of coverage of and goes yeah. down to video and I mean, stuff like that. Yeah, we got to talk to my dad or Will's granddad, and yeah. it's it's. Yeah, there isn't any footage there, so you can only go go by and what word you read, mouth, yeah. word of mouth, what you read about them. But I mean, but the stats speak for itself. Yeah. you know, you're yeah, talking he, about the achievements. We're talking about yeah. Champions League and, and Player you know. of the Year in 1949 in England, captain Manchester United to win the league and the, the FA Cup. Um, it's not been too many Player of the Years the rest in England of, of Ireland. The rest yeah. of Europe against yeah. uh, the 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 Great Britain eleven in 1947. You know, one player we did forget to give a mention. I uh, right back with John O'Shea. As well, now you're talking about yeah, Manchester United and Champions League. Yeah, so. some versatility certainly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd uh, more in anywhere now. Yeah, <laughs> centre back though for me. Centre, yeah, centre yeah but you know, you tell man, you gotta throw him in somewhere. Uh, you you know gotta throw him in, could throw him in midfield. Could throw him in goal. Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, I think he deserves a mention on the he list. Do, he definitely uh, but, deserves a mention. But more so, yeah, yeah. centre back. Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, but I noticed. Yeah. I, I I felt as though you wanted to say something there. Um, yeah. No, it's just I I about Kerry. Like I I think it's very. It's very good that you brought it up, but just from a per- and I'm a Man United fan, so I have heard about him before okay. and stuff. And it's just for, for for me personally, I find it hard to include someone I'd never played because I'm also and I'm not saying he wasn't an amazing player and the stats speak for themselves. But people, when they describe things to you that happened in the past, they're usually in a hugely positive light as well. I just can't give it okay. to me personally. I can't give it to someone that I can only see his career on on paper. If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Whereas I have seen okay. all these lads, so that would be how I do my pick. But just looking at lads, just some sit like really like Gary Kelly, Stephen Carr, Steve Finn, and Seamus Coleman, like they're top, you know, modern, really modern fullbacks in the way they were good going forward, good defensively. Um, 
Yeah, it's a serious talent at right back over the last yeah. decade. Well, apart from decades, Seamus, you have all pretty much Champions League players there, and that's not yeah, to say Cha- yeah. Seamus, you know, couldn't have been a Champions League. But he's League turned player. down moves. From well, that, well, that's the thing, and that that's yeah. sometimes for me that is a little bit. You'd like to see. I know you hate me saying this, <laughs> but you'd like to see those players kind of the Irish yeah, players test themselves yeah, yeah. on the big stage. You love to see them in the Champions League because I think that helps. You know, when they come back and they're playing international football against the Spains, against the Germany, mm. because they have played at that level and they yeah. have played it against the likes of, say, your Ribéry, your Zidane mm. or your Ronaldo, those sort of, it really helps them because it gives them confidence. Yeah, you know? well, I, I, I agree to, to a degree. But you look at uh, at Coleman, you know, he really started to kind of really come into his prime when uh, Moyes actually left. Mm. I think had he played previously with Moyes, he was trying to build a team to get into the Champions League and whatever, money-wise and so on. Then managers chop change and he, he was, he, well, the, the team were up and down, losing players to sell the best players or whatever. There was a case where, you know, the manager was probably promising, oh, we're going to try and get into the Champions League, blah, blah, blah. But we're talking about playing against players, like this season, he finished the season very, very strongly with uh, clean sheets against Mane, who at the time, if you're looking at, I think it was around March, he was probably the form player at the time. Uh, Hazard, he kept a clean sheet against as well. When uh, Everton beat Chelsea, sorry about that. Uh, when Man United, uh, we beat Man United four 0 clean sheet again. Um, so and, and then Obama Yang at Arsenal, clean sheet again. So he has as well he, he, competed against these players and done very well. You very rarely see Seamus get the the better of him done. I know he didn't have a great start to the season this season, but finished very, very, very strongly and rightly got back as, you know, first choice right back, regardless of what Mac Doherty was obviously I wouldn't even be included Mac Doherty in this because simply his caps that's yeah, all don't, okay. yeah. yeah, no no I accept that. But uh, the point about Seamus though is I think and I go back to Will's point, before his injury, I mean he was I, I reading the reports he was very close to joining Manchester United mm-hmm. and They've probably, I don't know how much they've spent on right backs without getting someone half as good as Seamus. I, I just wonder as well, had he gone, and I appreciate Paul as an Everton fan, had he gone idea. to Manchester United, had he been playing in the Champions League on a regular basis and uh, possibly winning the, the Premier League or whatever, competing in the Champions League, had he been in that team, would he have even become an even better player than he is today? And that's maybe the, the, the one maybe regret no his loyalty to Everton can't be questioned and his ability and you're right about the clean sheets and he's he's marked some great players out of the game but, but as well as you, yeah. you, you talk about loyalty as well Everton did re- repay that when he did get injured to be fair yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. no yeah. I agree I think we've talked about it on, on, in the past how it, it was always going to take Seamus six to nine months to come back to top form and now he's there but I, I laughed when you said playing Champions League football regularly with Man United <laughs> because <laughs> that's not a given anymore back, back in the but, day back a few I, years I ago I well, Moyes left yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of worth pointing out with the clubs as well because I think you can look at things, it can be a bit of skewed when you look at things. So you look at Stephen Carr and you go, oh, he played for Spurs, but Spurs weren't a Champions League club when he was playing for them. Mm-hmm. They were still Spursy. Mm. Um, and I think Steve Finnan, he was at, he was a key player, one of the most consistent in the Liverpool, probably one of the worst teams ever to win the Champions League, yeah. the, the Istanbul team. Yeah. He was very consistent. But I think with Gary Kelly, you might look at it and go, oh, he only played for Leeds. But he, you know, Leeds won the first, uh, the last first division before the Premier League. He'd only joined them then. And they were actually one of the better clubs. In oh, yeah. yeah, in yeah, about yeah. So yeah, yeah. he was yeah. playing very, he was playing at a high standard, you know, for, for the best part of the decade. I think they were in the Champions League with semi-final as well in the early part yeah. of the... Yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. a lot century. of Irish, yeah, McPhail. Yeah. And, McPhail and and yeah. part. Yeah. Um, okay, so number one choice. I'm going to stick, stick to my guns and go with Gary Kelly on this one. Okay, well, yeah, I'm gonna go with Gary. Uh, as Jackie obviously is, yeah, has a, a special place in my heart, and it'd be lovely to have seen more about him and know more about him. I think he deserves a lot, a lot more credit, but you gotta go with what you can see. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Gary Kelly as well. Uh, I picked him in the last video uh, based on his longevity, yeah. and if that's basically what we're going on. I I, I appreciate Jackie Kerry, okay. and uh, yeah. you know, and I have to give him an honourable mention, but. Uh, as as Peter says, I'd have to see more or know more yeah. about him, you know, type of way. Like obviously your granddad speaks very well and your oh, dad speaks very really highly of him. So I mean you can only go off of what you see. It'd be like comparing for us now, Messi to Maradona type of thing. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. That's the way I look at it. So I think three votes for Gary Kelly. So Gary Kelly, 
gets in our Republic of Ireland all time. Okay. <laughs> Eleven at right full back. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Are we wrong? Are we right? Or who would you choose? Um, don't forget to drop a like on the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so now.